Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to you all this morning. It's certainly a joy and definitely a privilege for me to be here this morning and bring you God's word. Um, I'm Pastor John Seelman, who uh, retired from the ministry about a year ago. Uh, perhaps some of you were here in December when I did preach here once before. Again, a pleasure to, to, to share God's word with you here this morning. Um, everything's been before you in the service folder. Um, so may you be with us and bless us as we praise him here we begin with uh, hymn number 478.
steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love. And for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil, hear our prayer, O Christ. Christ, Christ have mercy. For the well-being of your holy church in all the world, and for those who offer here their worship and praise, hear our prayer. Notice in the readings today a common theme and also in the, the hymns that we just sang and will sing, uh, and that is of prayer. And so here we see in our first lesson um, uh, a prayer that's being offered. And you notice in the prayers that we see, they're prayers for others and for the help of others, and that should be one of our main concerns when we're speaking to our Lord. The Lord said, the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great and their sin so grievous that I will go down and see if what they have done is as bad as the outcry that has reached me. If not, I will know. The men turned away and went toward Sodom, but Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham approached him and said, Will you sweep away the righteous with the wicked? What if there are 50 righteous people in the city? Will you really sweep it away and not spare the place for the sake of the 50 righteous people in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to kill the righteous with the wicked, treating the righteous and the wicked alike. Far be it from you. Will not the judge of all the earth do right the Lord said, If I find fifty righteous people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. And then Abraham spoke up again. Now that I have been so bold as to speak to the Lord, though I am nothing but dust and ashes, what if the number of the righteous is five less than fifty? We destroy the whole city for the lack of five people? If I find 45 there, he said, I will not destroy it. Once again, he spoke to him, what if only 40 are found there? He 
said, for the sake of 40. I will not do it. Then he said, may the Lord not be angry, but let me speak. What if only 30 can be found there? He answered, I will not do it if I find 30 there. Abraham said, now that I've been so bold as to speak to the Lord, what if only 20 can be found there? He said, for the sake of 20, I will not destroy it. Then he said, may the Lord not be angry, but let me speak just once more. What if only 10 can be found there? He answered, for the sake of 10, I will not destroy it. The word of our Lord. The psalm this morning is Psalm 34, which we will sing in unison.
of St. Luke in chapter 11, this selection is also going to serve as our sermon text. Out of love and respect for our Lord's gospel, we stand during three. One day, Jesus was praying at a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation. Then Jesus said to them, Suppose you have a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, Don't bother me. The door's already locked, and my children and I are in bed. I can't give up, get up, and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be open. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. You see that.
Father and to our Lord and our Savior, Jesus. Word of God we would like to consider today and apply to our lives as recorded for us in St. Luke chapter 11. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Dad, I want to learn how to paint. Can you teach me how to paint? I grew up with a father who um, literally tore the entire house apart, down to the studs, put up drywall, and then mudded it and got it ready for painting. And he did a lot of painting. I was like six, seven, eight, nine. Actually, he was still doing it when I was 16. Uh, but a lot of painting. And I thought, well, that's kind of easy. You know, he, he, he puts the paint in there and he rolls it on the wall and it kind of looked like fun. So I wanted to learn how. Even small tasks like that, we need to learn and be taught. And, and I think as, as children and as we're growing up, we have a natural desire to learn how to do something. We're looking at an example of that today. The disciples were watching Jesus pray. They saw him doing it many times. Maybe they thought in their mind there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. So they wanted to learn how, and so the natural question is, Lord, teach us to pray. Now I want to know later on, because I don't know how long my voice will hold out, would anybody like to come up and do the prayers and things like that at the end of, you know, later on in the service? Do I have any takers on? Or would anybody like to stand up right now and, and offer a prayer on behalf of a loved one or something that's going on. Just, just go ahead, I'll give you a moment. At the beginning of the service, um, I was talking to some of the gentlemen and, and, uh, and a lady, and they said, well, there, there are people that are sick. Can you, can you offer a prayer for them? I don't know how many thousands of prayers I've offered on behalf of congregation members over the years in the ministry. And I've wondered at times, do, do, do you think I've got a, a, an express line to the big guy? That I'm the only one who can do it? And I tried council meetings, I tried catechism class, I tried so many times uh, Bible classes. Would love, someone like to start our Bible class today with, with prayer? Go ahead, Pastor. Okay. I don't mind doing it. I love doing it. I love speaking to my Lord. But if you really look at it, prayer is actually easier than learning how to paint. And so the disciples, I'm not going to knock them, they wanted to know the right way. John taught his disciples, so teach us. And so, Lord, teach us to pray. Teach me to pray. Teach me to pray today and tomorrow. I'm not talking about just for my food, you know, but for all things. Because that's what the Lord wants. But first of all, notice how Jesus started his prayer. You need to go to the right person. That's a key there. Go to the person that you know can help you. As I went to Dad, he was the one painting, looked good to me. Who do you go to for your help? And so Jesus starts it off right away, the same way he started his prayers to his Father in heaven. Same person we go to. Now, we study his word, we have his word, we know what God's done for us. Why does it seem that we run into trouble? We don't know what to do. Because if you're anything like me, when something comes up, 
How am I going to figure this out? Instead of immediately going to your Lord and going, Lord, how would you like me to do this? I'm guilty of that. I've confessed this throughout my ministry. I don't pray enough. At times it would seem that most of the prayers that I had on a Sunday were incorporated in the service. How many times have we already prayed today? And we're going to do some more, aren't we? We go to our Lord, our God, the maker and creator of this world, because we know he's the only one who can really help us. You saw Abraham do that. Didn't you? He went to God. He was troubled with what was going to happen. Not in his life. Notice he was praying to other people, for other people. But he was praying to God. Nobody else, not enough. You don't pray to another believer. You don't pray to the Son of God's mother. You pray to God the Father. Well, what kind of prayer do you take? Again, let's, let's use Abraham's example. Praying for other people. Praying for their needs. Not just yours. Now we turn back to Jesus' prayer and what was his. And I'm sure you've had enough Bible classes you've had explained often enough. You look at the Lord's Prayer and how much of the Lord's Prayer is for God and his name be hallowed in my life and I honor what he wants me to do spiritually and how much of it is for the physical things that I do in this life and have in this life. And when I even pray for that, what's it for? Just today's needs today. And so the first thing in prayer is you go to him, and how cool is that? I mean, we use the word father, it's a little more respectful, but basically all you're doing is going, Dad, can you help me? And that's all prayer is, 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 a, is conversation. You sit and have conversations with people every day, don't you? I listen to many members come in and talk to each other. That's all you're doing with God. You're saying something to him, and he responds to you. He responds to you. He never lets a prayer go by. He listens. He knows. And that's the second key thing in your prayer is, you know, we don't always get an answer. Do we? Sometimes you may have to go a second time. Oh, do I have to ask him again? Maybe you have to go a third time. Again, Lord? I thought I asked you once before. But notice the prayers that we see as examples here. Look at what Jesus says. What do you do? You need something. You go to the right person. Just like the little story he tells. Someone comes, you don't have it, go and, oh, the neighbor's got to have food. Go away. I, I, I really, I'm not going to the refrigerator. I'm not getting you some out of the freezer. I'm in bed. I don't want to help you. And the guy keeps knocking and knocking and knocking and knocking and knocking. Did Abraham seem to be just a little repetitive, a little pushy himself, over and over? I mean, come on, he, he got God to commit to 50 in, in a fairly large city, then got him down to 45, then down to 40. I don't know about you, but I probably, even if I had gotten to 40, would have stopped there. But not Abraham. He was going to get God to commit. And I think too often we give up. Oh, he didn't ask my prayer yesterday. He must have been listening. Is that why you give up on the conversation? Now, I know I, I asked the prayer question and didn't see any hands, but I'm guessing if I ask whether anybody has raised children, a few more hands are going to go up. And if you've raised children, you know 
they will come and ask for something. And like a dog with a bone, they're not going to give up on it, are they? They're going to ask, and they're going to ask, and they're going to ask. Fine! I don't care whether you're at the grocery store or whether you're at Toys R Us or wherever you are. Any parents, sometimes, yes, sometimes you have to say no, but you know what? That doesn't stop a child from asking over and over and over again. Why is it we seem to grow up and we think, God doesn't answer me the first time, you know? I really need help with this, this situation. You sleep on it, you wake up the next day, and it's still there. And it's still there the next day. Maybe, just maybe, we just aren't serious enough about our conversations. We've gone to the right person. And then we ask for things, just maybe, that aren't best for us. I know I have found that out. And I'm really glad the pastor selected that hymn right before the, before the sermon today. I'm going to leave all things to God's direction. I'm going to continue to ask because I know he's going to answer. I'm going to keep on looking because I know I'm going to find. I'm going to keep knocking on his door because I know he is going to answer me in my prayer. Because he's promised to. And maybe one of the things that stops us or hinders us from going regularly to the Lord, and when I say regularly, I mean 8, 10, 12 times a day, which is way beyond my number. But go to him and keep on asking, knowing he's going to answer you. And he's going to answer you in the way that's going to benefit you the most. I'm not going to go into some of the times, but I can guarantee you at times I've had to wait six months, 12 months, Sometimes it's taken quite a while when I look back and go, I'm kind of glad he didn't write me a letter because it would have been very lengthy. And that he didn't have to go to the explanation because now I really see how clearly it was all going to work out for me. All I had to do was ask him to take care of it. Because he's not going to give me anything back. He's not. Lose a job, good or bad. Heart condition, good or bad. I can keep going with all the different troubles we have in our lives. Marital problems, good or bad. But he's going to be there, and he's going to be with you. He's going to see you through all those things. And so he has to point out, you know what? I have always tried to do it, and I'm glad I have a son in the congregation here today. And I've told him over and over and over again, you know what? I, I always wanted good for you, even when sometimes it didn't turn out. If a father, if a human being... Jesus says, if you know how to take care of your family, your children, your loved ones, your friends, don't you think God the Father has nothing but best intentions for everything? And not just intentions, but is going to carry that out for you, for your benefit. How much more will your Father in Heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? When I ask for the forgiveness of sins, like we did earlier, he answered right away, didn't he? He didn't leave you hanging. As soon as we confess our sins, as one of his called workers, I am told, tell those people those sins are forgiven. That prayer was instantly answered. Done. Your guilt's gone. You want another prayer answered? You're going to come down here and you're going to partake of the Lord's Supper. You're going to take his body and blood. What does he promise? Your sins are going to be forgiven in the body and blood, the bread and wine 
of the Lord's Supper. That prayer is already answered before you even start to take it. Done. And that's the way God is with us, with his children. He gives us what we need. And I thank him for that. I thank him for the, for the protection he has offered me, and more sometimes even when it's not asked for. But prayer is such a precious thing. You get to speak to your Heavenly Father directly. And he listens. And I think the coolest thing is, you know what your prayers are? They're perfect. Anybody who doesn't want to come up here and offer a prayer, and, and I admit, before I was a pastor, I wouldn't have wanted to do that either. That, that scared me. And, and what was my number one reason? I might say it the wrong way. I might stutter. I might not, you know. Neat thing is, when you're praying through your Lord and Savior Jesus, everything turns out perfect. Because we're praying through him, the one who loves us. We're praying through another human being who's able to then turn to his Heavenly Father and go, oh, this is, this is what he needs. And so it is the perfect prayer. And so I encourage you all to one of your prayers be the theme of today's sermon. Lord, teach me to pray. And don't just teach me how to pray, but teach me how often to pray. And encourage me and tell me over and over again, you know what? I want to hear you. I want to hear your voice. And God does. May we pray to him often for all the things that we need in life because he's there waiting to answer. Amen. Please rise. May the peace of God which surpasses our human understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We'll continue by confessing our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We find on page 9. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternal Joy. 
pride in their workmanship. God does find satisfaction in all the work that was done. Invigorate the schools of our land. Give success to every effort that helps students read, think, and communicate in ways that will promote an informed and responsible citizenry. Arouse curious minds to discover the wonders of your created order. Give us teachers and students to pursue excellence. Strengthen the families of our country. Give fathers and mothers a renewed commitment to be good parents. Give children and young people the wisdom to regard their parents as your representatives. Give us the love of another as you have loved us. And hear us, Lord, as we now come to you with our private. Gracious Father, you pray boldly, as Jesus taught, with the confidence that you will hear, with the faith that you will respond for our welfare. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our Lord, look at